Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Spider-Man video. The original writer of the movie came out and just explained what his original super dark ending for the movie was going to be, a bunch of deleted scenes and an alternate storyline for that first trilogy, as well as what the story through Spider-Man 6 was going to be. That's right, they were originally planning six different Spider-Man movies, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for Spider-Man 3 on the video. So because there's a lot of alternate story and deleted scenes here, I'll just number these differently as we go along, but this goes all the way back to Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. So the original writer of that first Spider-Man movie, David Kep, was doing an interview for a couple other movies, and during that, he talked about the original plans for those first Spider-Man trilogy that he had mapped out, and it was going to be way more Empire Strikes Back in his own words. Way darker, way different villain layout. Then when I initially talked about them doing six movies with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, he was actually going to come back later and do three more movies for Sony before things changed again. So I'll explain all those. But originally during the first movie, one of the biggest changes would have been they would have started with Gwen Stacy in the Green Goblin saga from the comics, where there was no Mary Jane yet, and Peter Parker's first relationship after he became Spider-Man and got the spider bite was with Gwen Stacy just like it was in the comics. Then at the end of the first movie, it would have been Gwen Stacy that the Green Goblin throws off the bridge like he does at the end of the theatrical cut with Mary Jane, and her neck would have been snapped when Spider-Man tries to catch her, just like it happened in the comics. A much, much darker ending to that first movie. Originally, Stan Lee explained that the reason why they killed off Gwen Stacy this way is because they felt like Mary Jane was a more complex character and they wanted to introduce her to the forefront. So in order to do that, they felt like the best solution was to kill off the Gwen Stacy character. Eventually, the studio did do a version of this storyline during Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. But in the original version of events with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, that would have led to Spider-Man 2 starting off in a much darker place, like he mentions Empire Strikes Back in terms of the trilogy, where Spider-Man has been way more shaken up after Gwen Stacy's death, but he's just starting to develop a relationship with Mary Jane. Then the villains that he fought in the subsequent Spider-Man movies would have still been core Sinister Six villains, but the order of the villains in which members of the Sinister Six that he fought at each different time would have been a little bit different. Like in Spider-Man 2, he faces Dr. Octopus in the theatrical cut with a little development on the Harry Osborn Green Goblin arc, but originally, Sony had actually planned to do way, way more villains. This is starting to sound familiar, so it would have been Dr. Octopus, the Lizard, Black Cat, and even more Harry Osborn Green Goblin than was originally in the movie. Instead of calling it Spider-Man 2, they would have called it The Amazing Spider-Man, and Dr. Octopus was going to be very different. He was going to be a much younger version of the character. He was going to be revealed as the person who created the genetically altered spider that gave Spider-Man his powers. He would have also been in a love triangle with Mary Jane and Peter Parker. His spine still becomes fused to the tentacle harness like it did in the theatrical cut, but it starts to kill him slowly, and he would have tried to take Spider-Man's spine to replace his, so you can see how much darker they had planned to take the Spider-Man movies. Then a much more comic book accurate version of the Harry Osborn Green Goblin would have teamed up with him to fight Spider-Man and take out a $10 million bounty on his head in the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson. It was actually Sam Raimi that revealed that he changed the Dr. Octopus storyline for the theatrical cut. It was his idea to make him Peter Parker's hero as a scientist before he becomes Dr. Octopus. He wanted the big final battle to be more about Peter trying to save him from his demons rather than just trying to kill him. They kind of replicated that relationship for the Spider-Man PS4 game, with Peter Parker being one of Dr. Octopus's students at Empire State University. In the tragic villain turn during the movie and then the big final battle was also kind of similar too. Then by the time we get to Spider-Man 3, originally, in the alternate storyline, it would have led to a more climactic Sinister Six-style team-up, with a bigger, more comic book accurate version of the Harry Osborn Green Goblin. They were always going to do Sandman, because Sam Raimi just really obsessed with the Sandman character, and originally, before they decided on including the Venom character, they were going to do the Vulture, and he would have been played by, get it, Ben Kingsley. Later, we all saw Ben Kingsley showed up in the Marvel movies as the fake Trevor version of the Mandarin. He also came back in the Marvel one-shot from Iron Man 3 called All Hail the King, just as a way for Marvel to tease the real Mandarin, which we're all actually going to see next year in a Marvel Phase 4 movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. That's going to be Marvel's big spring movie next year. 
they were always planning on doing a version of the Venom storyline, but originally it was very different and merely just Spider-Man getting the symbiote. This is when they were still planning on doing four to six Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire, so presumably their intent with Spider-Man 4 would have been to introduce a version of Eddie Brock, then give him the symbiote during that. The theatrical cut of Spider-Man 3 combines a couple different Venom stories from the symbiote saga. Spider-Man gets the symbiote during Secret Wars, then learns about it during subsequent Amazing Spider-Man stories, then way down the line they do the famous church scene where he gets rid of it, and then separately in another story when they started doing the Venom solo title they retconned that a little bit and said that Eddie Brock had been there at the church when that was happening and that's how he got the symbiote and became comic book Venom. So Spider-Man 3 just sort of crammed a ton of different Venom symbiote stories into that one movie. Then when they were still planning on doing four to six Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, they would have also done Venom spin-offs. That's where you get to Toxin, a lot of the other crazier versions of the symbiotes like Carnage. Sam Raimi then said right after they finished Spider-Man 3, that was when the talks about Sony doing back-to-back -back shoots for Spider-Man 4 and Spider-Man 5 were happening with Tobey Maguire and the exact same production team. That's right, they were initially planning on doing an Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame situation with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And that's also when they hired the screenwriter to plot out through Spider-Man 6 with Tobey Maguire, just to give you an idea for how far out they were thinking about his story. It would have slowly turned him into what Iron Man became in the MCU, or even like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, somebody who played the character for way more than 10 years. When Sam Raimi was talking about Spider-Man 4 and Spider-Man 5, he was making a lot of comparisons to Peter Jackson doing the Lord of the Rings trilogy because he filmed all those movies back to back. The story for Spider-Man 4 at that point though was them going back to the Vulture character as the main villain. He would have been a very different version from the comics. He would have been played by John Malkovich. He would have been revealed as a relative of Mary Jane's taking control of the Daily Bugle from J. Jonah Jameson. They were going to introduce a version of Anne Hathaway as Felicia Hardy, who instead of becoming the Black Cat, would have actually become a female version of the Vulture. The reason why they said they did that instead of doing Black Cat is because they felt like she would have become too much of a copy of the Catwoman character, which is hilarious because Anne Hathaway would then go on just a little while after that to be Catwoman. They would have finally gone full lizard with Kurt Connors from the previous movies, and then they would have revealed Bruce Campbell as a version of the Quentin Beck Mysterio. There are even storyboards for a lot of this too. I don't know how they would have explained the previous versions of Bruce Campbell that had cameo scenes in the other Spider-Man movies, but the reason why Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man 5, and Spider-Man 6 fell apart and why Sony decided to reboot the character was mostly because Sam Raimi said that he felt creatively exhausted and didn't think that they could make the planned release date for Spider-Man 4 that Sony had set. So he backed out of the project and that's when the House of Cards started to fold. Tobey Maguire then backed out and that was pretty much it. And while Sony was planning Spider-Man 4, 5, and 6 with the new writer and the new team, separately they were also hedging their bets with a reboot and a recast of Spider-Man. That's why they were so quick to announce Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man right after Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire left the project. It had already been in the works for a long time, and that's just the way the studios operate. They always have contingency plans in case directors back out, actors back out, that's how Marvel was able to announce Sam Raimi as the new director of Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness so quickly after Scott Derrickson backed out earlier this year. Let me know in the comments though, what do you think about the alternate darker Spider-Man storyline, the darker version of the Venom symbiote saga, and the alternate plans for what Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man would have been? You have to keep in mind though, if they had made it through all six of those Spider-Man films, that would have taken them up into modern day MCU through Civil War and it would have been Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man crossing over with the Avengers instead of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. There was even a deleted scene from that first Iron Man post credit scene where Nick Fury references Spider-Man. That was going to be Tobey's Spider-Man. For those of you that really want to see him come back in a cameo scene at some point, Lord and Miller revealed that they tried to bring back both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield with Tom Holland for cameos in the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, but they claimed that Sony shot them down on the grounds that they felt like it was too soon to do something like that. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 is coming out in 2022. Hopefully by then they'll say yes and bring them back, but there's also talk of doing a live action Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and the fact that Sam Raimi is making new Marvel movies again, I'm sure at some point we'll see some classic Tobey Maguire Spider-Man Easter eggs and maybe even a cameo scene at some point. There's also the Easter egg from the Morbius trailer with the Spider-Man wall mural. It's actually Tobey Maguire's costume, but it's from a Spider-Man game and it's referencing the Tom Holland Spider-Man from the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. 
There's also bus advertisements for Spider-Man and the Daily Bugle, and it's Tobey Maguire's version of the Daily Bugle. So there is a lot of Toby Easter eggs in the Morbius movie right now, but that could be a misdirect. They'll be filming Tom Holland's Marvel Spider-Man 3 later this year, so there'll be some news about that coming up. I'll do videos for everything. Leave all your requests in the comments below. Congratulations, Jack Frost. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everyone click here for my Venom 2 trailer video in Easter eggs and click here for my new Spider-Man PS5 trailer with Miles Morales. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.